Hello and welcome to the Women's Rugby Pod, episode 173. I'm Sarah Byrne, joined with Donnie Hammond and Sadia Kabea. Today we've got great news. <laughs> that really put me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so ecstatic, Sarah, that uh, somebody's doing an intro. I never want to do the intros. Uh, it's brilliant. No, you carry on. I'm sorry, I was, I was whooping. That's all right, that's all right. Today we've got news from around the world and some brilliant guests coming on today. We've got Dr. Phoebe Murray, Bristol Bears teammate, and Sydney Gregson, who both have been ripping up in the PWR this year. Yeah, so off we go. Yeah, two cracking guests. But first, ladies, let's check in with... With you, weekend. You had a big smile on your face, Sarah. Uh, coming on this morning, good, good win for for Bristol. You were, you were down there, were you? That was part of your weekend's activities, was it? Yeah, I was going down there to support the girls, and yeah, I cannot believe. Well, I can believe like the girls put in so much work, but it was so nice to see them um, get the win and continue to have that winning streak against Exeter at home, which I think they really, really wanted. There was so much fight in the girls. Um, and I just think, yeah, I was, I was ecstatic, ecstatic for them. I'm so, so happy that they, they got the win and they showed that they can, you know, really, they deserve to be in the top four and compete with top four teams. Just given the, the recent history, is there a little bit of spice when the Chiefs come to town? I think, yes, West Country Derby. Um, I think, you know, they have very strong supporters. Uh, they bring their drums, they bring their, um, their outfits that they wear. So, um, I think it, it kind of gets started with that and then the fans join in and, and join in. I think the Bristol Bears fans brought their own drum uh, to Shaftesbury Park on the weekend, which I thought was funny. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's always competitive. The games are always really close and it's literally hardly, there's hardly much in it. Um, so to come away with, like I think, a convincing win at the weekend is something that you know we've all been working really hard for. Um, and I'm so, so happy that they got it. Yeah, three on the bounce. What were you doing, Sadi? A weekend off for uh, the African Violets? Were you sort of hand rolling shortbreads, baking, that kind of stuff? <laughs> no, I was just making cheese boards. No, no actual baking this weekend. Cheese what? Cheese boards. You know, a charcuterie board. Oh, yes. Good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I just find myself. Um, doing stuff with food now i don't know i i i am i am a, a chef uh, some some might say some may say you know of course cheese board, cheese boards is not really chefing whatever but i'm gonna say that i'm a chef um but yeah i was just having a chill weekend really ate lots of good food went out with my friends um and yeah back back to training this week but really i did really enjoy the weekend off but now i'm actually like okay i kind of want to play again so happy to be well, back that's a perfect week. How how important is it to, as you say, just kind of chuck rugby to to one side and, as you say, put some meat on a board and pretend you're a chef, um, and can can play with your can play with your, your your friends and 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 have a good time just to recharge mentally and physically. How how just how important is that? Oh yeah, I think it's so so important, especially with the seasons getting longer and longer um, <laughs> as the years go by. Um, like any any downtime and any chance to recharge is really really needed. Um, and it's those weekends that you get where you actually come back and you do feel like, oh my god, I actually feel feel rested. Uh, are the ones that are really good because sometimes you have a break and you saw things going on and then you come back and you're like, oh. I still feel the exact same way that I did last week. Um, so yeah, so to get like a week off, obviously a bit of downtime and training, and then the weekend off, um, it's, it's so important. And then especially for those girls who obviously are still in, still in full in, in full time jobs and stuff like that, to have a a second where you can breathe, I think it's so important, especially in this league. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And with Sadi, I mean, it's, it, it's a, a pot of confessions and a new revelation. Sadi is claiming to now be taking up chefing. Uh, and Sarah Brown, apparently you're going to become a referee, so I hear. Yeah, I, um, I went to this really, really good women and girls conference um, to, to as part of a, as the Red Roses. And uh, I bumped into the referees and it was promoting women in refereeing. I was like, oh, that sounds really, really interesting. And by the end of the day, apparently uh, I'm now going to be signed up to a refereeing course and <laughs> get involved. So I think, yeah, that was a bit of a that was a bit of a shock. But I do think it will be interesting in it. After the game on Saturday, some of the referees came over and they're like, Oh, we hear you're going to be a referee now. And I was like, Whoa, <laughs> 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 
Um, is, is it something? Yeah, would you like to stay? I mean, you're both miles away from it, uh, years and years and years. But is it something you, you want to probably stay in the game and would referee and coaching something like that tickle your fancy either of you? Um, well, yeah, I'm a scrum geek, so I probably <laughs> would enjoy coaching scrummaging. I would love to have that role specifically, like with the Red Roses or whoever, like just being a scrum coach. But um, the reason I got into the conversation about becoming a referee, I was like, why do they not referee the scrums properly? <laughs> <laughs> so it was more like, I see it like this, but how do you see it? So I was like, it would be interesting to know how a referee sees it compared to how a player like feels it. And that was the main bit of it. And then I was like, oh, maybe I should go into it because that one part of the game might be ref properly. Don't know any of the other rules though, so it could be. <laughs> 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 laws yeah absolutely that might be the first <laughs> vocab lesson that might be the first step um, Sadia what about you I can't see you as a ref Sad. no no she, I mean, oh, of course you're going to go straight on to MasterChef and uh, Bake Off and stuff, <laughs> aren't you yeah, yeah, I think I think Master Chef is more more my avenue, but refereeing, no, I don't think I'd like to be running around um, after rugby that much on the pitch, and also I would definitely get into arguments as a ref, so mm -hmm. I, I would entertain the players who get rowdy, which I don't think is something that a ref should do. So you know, I just stay away from that. But I would like to go into coaching. I go into coaching, but refereeing. No, because it seems like it's just as much stress as pet playing. And I think when I'm finished playing, I'm finished playing. <laughs> so I don't really want that same stress. Fair point. No, I know that there is a campaign to to push the amount of uh, female referees uh, knocking around because, yeah, it's um, across the board, um, not enough referees. Um, and as you say, yeah, probably comes uh, with a little bit of stress. Even on a Sunday morning touchline, there's, uh, there's plenty of opinions um, out there, but <laughs> You know, no ref, no game. It, it, it's very, very simple. Um, so if you think you can do better, uh, then get out and do it. Or zipit.com. <laughs> simple as that. So it was a full round of fixtures this weekend in the Premier Women's Rugby. The PWR here in England. Saturday saw Leicester host Gloucester Heartbreak, and it was a, a tight one, 26-33 to the champs in the end. In the third versus fourth player, Bristol took the spoils over Exeter 22-12. In the London Derby, Saracens ran out winners 48-17 against Ealing Trailfinders. And the game on Sunday, Harlequins got a much-needed win, 53-12 over Sale. Their woes continue. Uh, so it was a good day at Charleston Park then, Bernie. You were down there. I suspect not running the water. Sorry, you weren't a water technician for the day. No, I was just a, just a fan for the day. Um, still off feet. So, yeah, I don't think I would have got the water quickly to the girls on practice. <laughs> um, but uh, it was amazing to see. I think the first half, it was there was elements of frustration. I think you could see it in the girls. Um, I think Exeter definitely came out with the momentum, but... It'd be so interesting to speak to Phoebe and see what, what was said at half time. Um and the side that came out after that was was phenomenal. Um getting, you know, convincing win by the end of the second half, I just think is is phenomenal for the girls and something we've been really working on. So really excited to see what Phoebe what Phoebe says about it. I, yeah, how important is um that word momentum? Because that's what three in a row, Quinn's Leicester before that. Um because yeah, you've been by Saracens before Christmas. Um Sorry, like Loughborough Lightning seems to get a, getting a bit, bit of a role. What, what difference does that that make day in, day out, week in, week out? I think it adds a bit of, um, obviously as a team, it gives you a lot more confidence um, going week into week. Um, and I think it gives you that um, kind of bar that you're going to beat the next time you go into a game. But I think it also adds a bit of pressure onto yourself, which brings out, which brings out the best in teams. Um, so, yeah, obviously... Bristol and Loughborough both getting a bit of momentum, getting um, a couple of wins on the bounce now. But now we also have the ex expectation on ourselves to also carry on with that winning streak. Um, so yeah, it's, it kind of kind of brings out the best best in teams. But also it can it can sometimes pressure can get to get to teams. But I think yeah, for both Loughborough and Bristol, um, clearly that um, the momentum they're getting is is only being positive at the moment. I think having a um, 
momentum is really good. I think you can have momentum and work your way through the table. I think when you come to those teams that sit above you in the table, if you if you can continue that momentum and you you get that win, then that then builds into a massive confidence leading into other teams that are then above you in the table. So I think in terms of that, it's it's really really good. But I think that hurdle is that the people that sit above you. How do you continue that momentum through through the table and and continue to get those those achievements? So. I think it will add massive confidence to Bristol and, and any other team that has been building along along the way. I think it just brings a lot of confidence. Well, a lady who was at the centre of uh, the victory last week. Uh, we don't apologise for the jokes on the WRP, Phoebe Murray, I'm afraid. Uh, they're all free. And it's been at the centre of um, much of what Bristol has done over the last four or five seasons. Hardly missed a game and hardly dipped in the level of performance. It's a very, very good morning. Dr. Phoebe Murray, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very good indeed. Congratulations. Great win at the weekend. What are the scenes like post match? Um, is it sort of relief? Are we getting to actually playing the way that we want to? Um, was it just purely about the win? Yeah, it was a really, really good feeling after the game. I don't think it quite sunk in for a, a few of us. I was talking to Meg Varley after, and she was like, it just hasn't sunk in that we beat them. Um, but yeah, I think it was um, not really relief. I think more excitement that actually we'd probably get into the point where we want to be. Um, we kind of said these next kind of few games building before the Six Nations break were a massive chance for us to kind of find our way again, find the Bears form. And I think we can kind of, we've built on the last two games and kind of found our way a bit more um, against Exeter on Saturday. So to get the win, I think just kind of builds excitement that actually we're doing the right thing and, and finding our form again. I think for me, um, watching you guys play, and obviously played with you before the season, um, well, sorry, not before the season, in the season before I got hurt. Um, I think for us, it was like how we would get ourselves into really good positions and we would win like Saracens. And and then and then we, we didn't know how to stay there. We didn't know how to stay on top. We're actually, on the weekend, it found like it was a bit frustrating at the start. And then, d- don't know what Dave said to you at half time. That would be interesting to know. Um, and then And then you managed to stay there and you stayed in that fight and you didn't let them come back in. And that was something that I've not seen or felt while we while I was playing and not seen from Bristol for a long time. So it was great to see that one. What did what did Dave say at half time? Um <laughs> if you're allowed to say. And two, also like how did it feel? What what felt different in that game to manage to stay on top? Um so I think Dave at half time he just said um the reason that like, in the first half why we kind of like you said, we probably weren't that first half was a bit difficult for us because we just kept doing things that we'd never done before. Like a week I think a couple of times we just kind of got caught in our own 22 trying to chuck a ball that probably wasn't on. Um, but he said, like, if we kind of stick to what we know, actually, we are so in this. And at the halftime, it was obviously only 12-5. But, and I remember you saying after Saracens at Christmas, like, we need to deal with that pressure. We need to deal with those high pressure games. And like, for me, the feeling was, I never doubted that we were going to win that game. Even at half time. I just thought we are so in this. And if, like you said, we kind of relish that pressure and maybe f- like I think there's a couple of points in that second half where that momentum flipped. So, you know, they had the yellow card, Deb scored two on the bounce. I think that kind of momentum flip really helped us kind of see out for the rest of the game. But that pressure that comes from those big games, I think that was kind of so key for us to not crumble at half time when, you know, we were down there's, you know, that added, you know, we need to get back into this game. We need to get ahead. Um, and actually this time, I think we didn't crumble. We dealt with it really, really well. And actually going out after half time, like me personally, and probably the girls felt the same. I was like, we're so in this, we can so win this. Um, so yeah, that was probably it. That's so great to hear. And and you looked really confident. Like the whole squad looked so confident. You're like, come on then. Um, and I just love that element from us. I think, yeah, brilliant. Let's take it into to Gloucester next week. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's really been stepping up this season for for you? New additions, young players, those uh, those old stages that's still doing it? 
Um, yeah, so I think one person definitely is is bots. Um, she brings really, really good energy. She bails us out a lot of times with her incredible turnovers in her own 22. Um, and she kind of was in charge of our mindset at the weekend. And she does get, she gets the girls going well kind of with her chats and stuff. Um, I think the Scottish girls that we've brought in this year have been great. I think Evie Gallagher has been class at the back row. She's consistently performed week in week out um you've got Meryl Smith as well and Eliane who are both quite young um but I think they've and Lana as well they've all added great kind of attributes to the team and they're such lovely girls as well they fit in so well um so yeah I think they're probably the great additions yeah mindset manager what take me through that what does that involve <laughs> so we kind of have three main leaders and on the day so we've got people in charge of our attack defense and then mindset um so the mindset is kind of for us is we obviously all go into the game um with the mindset of you know well, let's play the bears way but then sometimes if we need to kind of change if the game's not going our way or we're kind of making a few errors then we might change the mindset to kind of be a bit safer maybe we won't kind of throw the 50 50s or keep hold of the ball a bit more and just kind of find our way back into the game so they're kind of in charge of deciding when the appropriate time is for that um and then when we obviously go back to being kind of ambitious throwing the ball around wow what 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 insight um, <laughs> is that is that new from uh mr ward is it it is it's a mr ward special we had it for the last few seasons, and I think a few more teams now are starting to, to bring it in as well. But I think he was the OG, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've mentioned on this pod plenty of times before, he does not leave any stay on turn, does he? Um, do you have a mindset manager, Sadia, at uh, Lubra? We do not, but taking that back to Nathan, and I'll say <laughs> that I made it up myself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Here, Nathan, here's an idea and a charcuterie board. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh god <laughs> Phoebe what what gives you the drive we're, we're going to probably just touch on um, what you spend your time doing outside of rugby picture in a moment or two but the, the, the drive you, you have to to compete at the level you do um, amongst um, some pretty professional international athletes um, all of the time um, but at the level that you do um, where does that drive and desire come from? Um, I think part of the the drive is that I really want to reach kind of my full potential, um, no matter what kind of that level is, uh, whether that's kind of a top level premiership athlete or if that's an international athlete, then I think for me it's just I don't really want to leave the what if around um, and I want to kind of make sure, yeah, that I reach my full potential. And I think also growing up, I started rugby when I was kind of small, like six years old. Um, and there wasn't really any female rugby players around. It wasn't accessible. Um, and I didn't really have any female role models. So I think if I was kind of able to showcase to kind of the young girls up and coming now um, that it is, you know, possible and having a, a career in rugby, um and you know a career in medicine if that's what they want or a career in whatever then it is it is it is doable um and I think a lot of the girls you know always talk about being that role model for those young girls so I think that definitely definitely drives me how on earth do you juggle both <laughs> well being part-time is literally the only way that it is right. possible <laughs> um but I'm kind of very good at time management always have been um I work quite efficiently, so some people kind of call it lack of patience either way. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but either way, I just kind of, yeah, I don't know. I think because I enjoy both and they're so different that I wear kind of different hats. So for me, they feel very separate um, and I can kind of take different attributes from one and kind of put them into the other. So for me, they blend quite well. Um, and... I've kind of always had to balance kind of academics with rugby, with GCSEs and A-levels. So I think kind of learning the time management from that has kind of helped me take it into working in an actual career in it. Awesome. Well, look, we, we don't want to keep you from, from both. Um, we don't want your lack of patience to, to come on, <laughs> come on with us on the, on the WRP. One last question. Look, 
Dave Ward, um, head honcho there at Bristol, been very, very clear um, about getting a home semi final. Um, do, do, do you feel this is Bristol's year to do something special? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the, at the beginning, we kind of said this the year of the bear. Um, and I think kind of Bernard touched on it that we can take massive confidence from the weekend and go into Gloucester and kind of reproduce that performance. And actually these next games before the Six Nations are going to be so key into building for that home semi-final. So these big games coming up, we've got Saris as well, taking kind of those performances and building onto the next one. Um, and, you know, if we want a home semi-final and we want to get to the final, we need to be beating these top teams. So... You know, if we do that in the league, we have, can actually showcase that, yeah, we are contenders and we contenders and we are here to take that win. I'm going to squeeze one last one in. in with that in mind, is Gloucester Harbury this weekend a must mm -hmm. win mentally? Yeah, it is. It is a must win for us, like I said, to actually show that, you know, we are contenders this year. Um, and, you know, back at King's Home, where we played the semi final last year, be a bit bittersweet going back. But, um, yeah, I think it is. It's a game that we we definitely can win. Um, so, I think for us, if we have a good training week, we've got eight day turnaround, which is probably good for some of the broken bodies. But yeah, I think we're we can we can feel confident going into the weekend. Brilliant! Thank you so much for your time this morning. We'll we'll leave it there. Let you let you get on with your busy schedule. Really appreciate your time. Uh, go well at the weekend. Thank you, guys. I'm Jess Breach and you're listening to the Women's Rugby Pod. Great to have Phoebe on the pod. Uh, yeah, it was a really impressive win. Um, impressive performance from Leicester at the weekend. Meg Jones, obviously, on the score sheet. Um, Fran McGee as well. They were up 26-7 at half time. That's a really impressive and came away with two points in the end. That That's... Real food for thought up at uh, Welford Road, Matty Early Woods, whatever they call it nowadays. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think Gloucester had quite a heavily rotated side. Um, I think, like we mentioned, there's some injuries as well within the team. Um, but I do think it probably sparked some some fire, actually in a bad way, considering we're playing them at the weekend. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it, um, yeah, it definitely would. I think people would have been frustrated with with it or how they performed. Um, I haven't actually caught up with any of the Gloucester girls, so I don't know how they're, they're feeling personally, but I do think um, hopefully they'll get some players back. I know Maud, Maud's back. Um, I know she played last weekend. Um, and you, you still have Beckett and Alex, but I think it, it is really hard when you're missing key players. Um, not because people aren't aren't good, just because it, there's an inconsistency in what you're used to, what people normally do. You get used to playing with someone. So, I think um, I think now they've had a game with with maybe some of their injuries not there, and, and also some other people coming back in. I think they'll definitely get be be a really strong side, and I think they'll be frustrated with with last weekend's result. But fair play to Leicester. Um, I think they must have exposed the the weaknesses that Gloucester have really really well. Um, so it is good to see them getting some great tries in, getting some competitive matches in and seeing them build. Yeah, there's a real sense of, of building. Karen Lake, Alex Matthews, Richards with a couple of tries for Gloucester Harbury. Emma Singh as well. Just a point. RFU. Meg Jones is not Emma Singh. So can you sort your website out, please? <laughs> it's utter basics. Uh, the girls deserve better. Um, so take a picture of Meg Jones and pop it on where it says her name and not a picture of Emma Singh. The Saracens, 48-17. As expected, that reaction from Saris having lost the week before, Ely Moore was in for a, for a tough afternoon, weren't they, Sadia? Yeah, definitely, definitely as expected. Um, like I said, Saris are, are a very consistent and, and strong side and, and they have, you know, very, very key players who who keep that, that team where they are and clearly yeah this weekend they came together really well against against Ealing but obviously Ealing getting 17 points on the board as well um which fair, fair play to them against a very strong side and I didn't get to watch that game but I'll be interested to see where where Ealing's um tries came from but yeah not not really really a surprise there but a good, a good score for for Saris. Yeah I, I think for them and you, you... You guys can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but but it's about incrementally building for the likes of Leicester Tigers um, and for Ealing Trailfinders that 
last time they played Saudi, the fact that they were better this time. Uh, that I've heard in a post-match interview that if you look at the two games, things are things are a lot better. So we can expect kind of results like this, but just as long as they're they're continually building, Bernard. Yeah, um, I think it's really hard when you're a brand new team into the Prem. You're not going to be expected. I mean, if you do, fair enough, come in and smash everyone. I'm not saying you can't do that, but there's not that expectation of it. And it, it is difficult um, finding your feet. One, probably for all the staff, how does the PWR work? How, how does that element work to it? And then also for this new team, this, the new team you're building, like the teams we're talking about that are in top four have played together for the last three seasons, you've seen them build over the last, you've seen Gloucester build, you've seen Bristol build, you've seen Exeter build and Saris have, have continuously stayed there and they've had a very similar um, player base that whole time. So I think for them, it is about getting used to playing with each other, um, getting used to um, potentially seeing what do they need? Do they need some more kickers? Do they need some more fullbacks? Like it's interesting to see what elements that teams need to, to keep progressing. So I think, yeah, as long as they, um, continue putting that next best step forward and learning. I think it's going to be an exciting time for both those those teams over the next three three years, probably to see where they where they actually flourish too. Sorry, uh, on Sunday, Harlequins much needed win for them, fifty three twelve over over Sale. Um, you really pulled their socks up, uh, Harlequins at, at the weekend. A lot more bite, a lot more nip pace around that that midfield and what have you. For them, that's a, that's a good result for them going into going into Saris. Yeah, definitely a, a good result, and I think that's probably off off the back of weeks and weeks of frustration as a team. Um, you know, loads of going back to the drawing board, loads of analysis, seeing seeing where their spaces are to improve. And I think you know, hats off to them because I think last week we couldn't really. I, I didn't know who was going to win that game or who would come out on top. So for uh, Quinn's to come away with such a huge lead and such a huge win, I think is testament to you know how hard they've been training and, and what they've been doing to kind of improve and get back to the, the Quinn's that we've kind of known over the past couple of seasons. Um, but yeah, definitely a huge, huge win for them and, and definitely a confidence boost now um, going into the rest of the season. Sale appear to be still trying things. Is it the time to be trying things? I think always. I think you should always try things. I think if you if you don't try them, it's like you've got nothing to lose. If you're winning, you've got something to lose. If you're not having the results you want, sometimes trying some new things and continue to be ambitious is you might not find your feet straight away. The time time to do it. Um, and I think again, having key players miss like missing would make a big difference to teams that are used to having those types of players playing. Um, I think, yeah, go for it. You can always, if, it, if it's like something that, and you've tried it and it's terrible, don't do it again. <laughs> but, but try it, try and see, because you never know, it might pay off. Rugby is a game of 50-50, so I, I'm always there to take the chance. Um, but it, yeah, I guess you have to be rational about it sometimes. <laughs> if you're continuously doing something and it's definitely not working, I think it's time to scrap it. <laughs> um, I, I guess, Sadie, you could probably equate that to 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 your work in the kitchen. Uh, you know, when you try <laughs> things, um, <laughs> they don't they, they, they don't uh, particularly um, come off. But no, in all seriousness, you you've got to express yourself in the rugby field. That's why you picked up the ball in the first place, right? Whatever level you're at, you, you must have a uh, a freedom to to be able to express yourself in, in some way, otherwise, there ain't much point, is there? Yeah, def definitely. And obviously, so I think it's it's not um, unfair to say they're in a bit of a rut at the moment. And like you said, Bern, I think it is important to keep keep trying those things, especially when you know it's never nice to to lose games on the bounce. And if trying they're trying those things is what gives a bit of flair to say and gives them a bit of extra energy, then you know, a hundred percent go ahead and do that. And I think. You know, we've seen across the se across the seasons, teams go up and down. Towards the end of the season, so I was really picking up some steam. Loughborough, at the end of the season, was really losing a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot of steam. And I think teams go through those regeneration phases. And I think say are just in that um, right now. And like Cabernet said, they've lost a few, a few key players. But I think, yeah, you know, it's never, it's never nice, and it's not. There's not a lot of um, huge positives we can say at the moment with Sale, but. I think for them, it's just yeah, trying to get those small wins and building on on those on those little things. Um, yeah, going into the rest of the season really. 
Indeedy. So, look, let's catch up with the, the rest of the news from around the Oval World with a slightly new uh, approach to the news from now. We're asking grassroots club young players to be the WRP newsreader. And we are kicking off uh, with my club, uh, Waybridge Vandals, the Valkyries down there. And this is Rory Taylorson with our news. Hi, I'm Rory Taylorson and I play for Waybridge Valkyries at Vandals. Here's this week's news. In the Celtic Challenge, it was round five at the weekend. Edinburgh saw off Clovers 35-21, while the Wolfhounds got past Gwalia Lightning 36-24. Brithen Thunder continued the theme of winning at home with a 22-12 victory of Glasgow, which meant Wolfhounds finished top four points clear of Edinburgh. Then Clovers on 14 and Gwalior on 12. Brithen, Thunder and Glasgow bringing up the rear. So the playoffs shape up like this. February 17th, Glasgow versus Brithon Thunder at Scotstown. Then at the Hive Stadium, also that day, Edinburgh hosts Wolfhounds. On the 24th, Gwalior versus Glasgow and the Wolfhounds versus Clovers, which are both at the Kingspan in Belfast. And finally, on the 3rd of March at Parkey Scarlets, it's Clovers up against Edinburgh and the Derby Britham versus Gwalia. Premiership Women's Rugby Round 9 results. Leicester, 26-33 over Gloucester Hartbury. Bristol took the spoils over Exeter, 22-12. Saracens beat Ealing Trailfinders, 48-17. And Harlequins beat Sell, 53-12. On Round 10 this Saturday, at 12.30pm, as Saracens host Harlequins, that's a live game on TNT. At 2pm, Leicester travelled to Loughborough Lightning. Then on Sunday, Exeter welcome sale at 1pm and at 2pm, it's a West Country derby between Gloucester, Hartbury and Bristol. In France, it was round six of the Elite of Feminine. In Pool 1, Bobogny 0, Stade Bordelais 34, Lille 10, Montpellier, 19. Stade Francais, 7. ASA Rogmanar, 50. In Pool 2, Blacknack, 20. Lyon, 0. Stade Rennais versus Grenoble was a 27 all draw. Stade de Lusion, 29. Pool, 12. Which means Stade de Lusion and Blacknack are tied on 23 points and top of pool one Grenoble in third on 15 and Lyon on 10. In pool two it's really tight at the top. Stade Bordelais lead on 28. ASA Rogmanar 24, Montpellier 20 and Lille just in that playoff spot but way down on six points. This week the league takes a break and is back up and running the following week. In the opening game of the Rugby Europe Championships, Netherlands won 59-0 over Sweden. I've been Roy Tillerson with this week's news. Back to Saria, Sarah and Johnny. Hello you lovely people. I'm Shauna Brown and you're listening to Women's Rugby Pod. Uh, it is a very, very warm WRP Welcome to England International and Saracen's Centre of Excellence. It's honestly, it's funny the more you say it, Sadia Bernard, honestly. Uh, Sydney <laughs> Gregson. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sydney, sorry, I, I brought you in on an on a in joke uh, about centres of excellence, but you are a centre of excellence. I think you're a centre of excellence. Um, Thank you. Uh, how are you? Good win at the weekend uh, over Ealing Trail Finders. Must be must be happy with the the season thus far and a, another win over a London rival. Yeah, definitely. I think um, yeah, it's important for us to go out this weekend and put a performance in after the the loss to Gloucester. So um, yeah, we were pretty happy with our our performance and how we sort of progressed in attack um, from the week before. 
what went wrong against Gloucester Harper that you got right against Ealing T? Uh, a lot. <laughs> no. Um, I think uh, our set piece was much better and we just moved the ball a lot more. Um, you know, we've got a team with the ability to do that and I don't think we did that against Gloucester. So um, it just shows that when we do, we can play some really nice rugby. And somebody, and I didn't play against Gloucester Harper, he was back on the weekend. Just how good is it to play alongside Sophie de Goody? Oh, amazing. She is superwoman. Um, yeah, I'm glad she's on our team. She just produces something out of nothing and she's just worked so hard. She's everywhere. Um, so she is a really um, big player to us and she's you know, she's been fantastic this season. Yeah, just relentlessly brilliant, um, which is an incredibly annoying um, <laughs> trait. And to boot, she's a really, really lovely girl off the park as well, isn't she? Yeah, she really is. That's the kind of the annoying thing about it. <laughs> you know, when someone's that good, you kind of want to be like, oh, at least, at least she's a bit of a, well, can't say the word for you on here, can I? But at least she's not a very nice person, but no, she is. She's lovely. So you're like, oh, she's got everything. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, 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 the Saracens culture, what, what is it like to, to play in, in a Saracens team? And uh, in particular, this, this season, you you normally go into a, to a season being champions. Um, it's a different feeling for you. You didn't get to a final. Um, so how does this season sort of differ and, and what's it like being in the middle of it? Um, I don't think it's differed too much in terms of what we want to get out of the season and sort of how we approach it. You know, we've always, always pretty competitive um, and we've got a competitive environment. Um, I actually think the culture is the best it's been this season, I feel personally. Um, I think we're much more together um, and a lot closer on and off the pitch. And we're trying to do things like socials and, and, and build that togetherness, which I think we've done really well. Um, and I think it's showing on the pitch in, in most of our games. So, um, yeah, so it's a nice place to be at the moment, really. Come on, then. what's been your best social so far? And do you have social secretaries, social yes, managers? I'm one of them. I, I, I'm in the social group. We call ourselves the social sexies. Um, of <laughs> um, yeah, the best social by far. We went to um, Cardiff in December, and we went to um, Bingo Lingo. If you haven't been, you've got to go. It was so good. It was, it was in like a um, warehouse in Cardiff, and it was just so loose. Uh, we won. It was just really random, like. You, I don't think I played one game of bingo, if I'm honest, but the girls that did, if you won, you go up on stage and that has to have like a dance contest. And then Jess Breach won, I think it was like 50 steak bakes from Greg's and she's a vegetarian, so it was just hilarious. Um, <laughs> and you just, and then like uh, Fee McIntosh won this six foot tall rain, like blow up reindeer outfit. It was just random, but it was so fun. <laughs> Bristol, Loughborough, do anything similar to that? Possibly not during the season, but uh, building into the season. Have, have you got your own uh, social sexies in the uh, in the African violet? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do have a couple a couple of sh social sex, but we usually keep everything in Loughborough. Um, I think that what happens when you come to Loughborough. You stay in the Loughborough bubble, and you become a Loughborough local, and you go to the Loughborough local pubs <laughs> and everything. And that's where we usually all, all go to have our fun, which is it is a really good time. But if anyone else came, I don't know, from like London and was to come to the Loughborough pub, they might, you know, <laughs> turn a couple of heads and think, oh, who's that in the corner? But yeah, we do we do have a good time up here, but it's definitely, we, we keep it in Loughborough. Yeah, I'm definitely going with Sydney's night out thus far, <laughs> out of the two. Sarah Band, come on, can you top it? Yeah, we do. We have in the past, definitely more so. Um, I think since we've had like a lot of different internationals in our team, it's slightly harder. People living all over the place. But um, we had a slumber party last week. I think that definitely helped, uh, or the week before, um, where they just had like, um casual clothes a film on play some pool we've got a pool tournament going on at the minute um which people are getting heavily invested in buying their own clubs um clubs um schools. <laughs> i don't know hannah always tells me off for calling it stick so whatever you <laughs> so whacking, so whacking the you... balls off the table <laughs> what I meant to say is, yeah we had we had a really good harry potter social all the coaches dressed up i think dave dressed up as professor snape so that was funny um and i think we've, we've got a, a nice golf show social coming up soon before the girls will go back to international duty so there's a lot going on a lot of different things um 
but yeah, I think um, I think the, the pool the pool tournament is really taking over the girls at the minute. That's all I hear about. Sorry, the blow up uh, reindeer costume wins it for me. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going with Sydney uh, on the next out. Is actually, I'm not. Am I? Uh, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> you, you're welcome. Oh wow, uh, that's very very kind. Uh, very very kind indeed. Look, you've got uh, the duel coming up this weekend. Um, yeah, historically, those are you know, were the clubs, weren't they? Uh, beginning of sort of when we got into to Premiership rugby and its different guises. Um, possibly the Vicks have lost a, a little of the uh, a little of the gloss, but there's still be loads and loads of spice, weren't there? Always is, yeah. <laughs> it's always a big game against Quinns, you know, as you say, the history of the rivalry. Um, yeah, it's always a huge event. So really looking forward to it, especially can, the, watching their game yesterday, the performance they put in, it's going to be super competitive, um, as it always is. But um, yeah, really looking forward to that one. Is it a genuine dislike or or is it sort of played up to the cameras a little bit and actually post-match for all fun and games and having a beer in each other's changing rooms? Yeah, I think post-match, it is a, it's like any game, isn't it? Like The women's rugby is such a small sort of bubble that everyone knows everyone but and some of my best friends play for Quinn's so personally I'm no dislike there but um there's just that it's kind of a funny rivalry I think it's each team likes to dislike the other team but actually do we really dislike them I don't know <laughs> and it's just ramped up by uh by our, by our media tip types um, <laughs> who are your good friends in Quinn's then and do you give Put a little extra shoulder into the tackles when you when you meet your your good mates on the on the opposition. Oh, I might this weekend. I'm not sure. No, um, Ellie Quadun's one of my best mates, so um, it's always nice to play against her. If she's not stepping me or running around me. <laughs> yeah, uh, what's your bag bag for the weekend? Didn't she? She did. Everything was very tight at the weekend, including her hairdo. Um, yeah, look, um, looking at that 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 game, uh, Queens over Sale, uh, fifty three twelve. Um, a lot, lot sharp, a lot nippier through through that midfield. Um, what have you picked out in particular? Because obviously you watched the watched the game. Yeah, I think you know they looked to play. I think a lot similarly to how we look to play at Saris. I think you know moving the ball, some of those hard lines, some of the outback options, and playing with layers, um, and then also with the kicking threat. So I think you know we've got to look out for that this weekend sorry if you can hear the children in the background i'm at school at work i don't know how loud they are i have got headphones in but they're at break time at the moment um you carry so, on thank you <laughs> um yeah so i think we just got to look at how we can defend that um and run the way that they play in training and just see how we can deal with some of their threats yeah absolutely um let, let's move on for, for you break time clearly break time is about to finish and we uh We'll lose you with a, a, a massive I've children got running over. So you're all right. <laughs> oh, well, they, 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 oh, thank you so much for. Uh, where, 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 where do you teach them? Uh, it's a school called Heath Mount. It's a little prep school um, near sort of Ware and Stevenage, uh, Hartford Way. So, so yeah, I've been oh, there since nice. my second year now. And what ages do you teach? Um, I'm currently in year three, so seven and eight year olds. So um, nice. yes, yeah, so every day is different. And where are you more more generally? We look out and sort of more more specifically rugby than than your teaching. But are you where you thought you you would be? We, we spoke just before coming on air that got the a handful of caps um, sort of ten years ago. Um, down the track now. Where are you? Are you happy with where you are? Happy with how you're playing? Yeah, I think you know I've been over the last sort of five or so years. I've been quite unlucky with quite a lot of injuries um, and. Hadn't really had a full consistent season for quite a long time. So I think um, even the start of last season, I sort of pulled my hip flexor. So I was out for the, the first little block. Um, so I'm just happy this season to be fully fit, touch wood, um, and just getting yeah, consistent game time in the centres and, and with a great group around me. So great to get back into, uh, into a Red Roses camp, pick up the stash. Yeah, yeah, well, I had to give it back, but um, <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. It was, um, no, it was really, really good, good experience. Um, I, I don't think you're joking. Oh, no, that's I'm not going, joking. That's going viral now. 
<laughs> we're coming yeah, for you, Steve. No, don't. Well. I won't get invited back in. Please, please invite <laughs> me to the next one. <laughs> no, I want the no, phone of Mitch um, now, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, on, on a serious note, it was yeah, it was a really good experience. I think the environment was lovely. Everyone was so welcoming, um, and the training was intense. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Sadi said it was chilled. Just easy. It was. To be was, fair, was uh, was easy. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the first day I couldn't believe how much free time we had, and then the second day, obviously, we had fitness testing. But then it was like a sort of yeah indoor like detail session, and then there was a full on session after. But I'm sure if I was to come to the next one, it'd be more intense, more more rugby. I would like to clarify: I did not say the twelve hundred was easy, Johnny. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't let the facts in. We have a good story. Um... No need, no need for that. No, you said that you said the cat was chill, but no, you didn't say it was easy. Um, no, you're, you're, you're quite right. Um, so uh, aspirations there for, for, for this season, club and country to win the Prem with Saris. You know, um, we fell short last year, so I think to get our home semi final is big for us, and then, um, yeah, hopefully go on to, to win the final, as I'm sure every Prem player would say that that's their goal. Um, but yeah, I think. After, I mean, I haven't won the Prem of Sarri since when we beat Quinns. I can't remember how many years ago that was now because... 2019, they, you scored a try. Yes, that one. So 2019. Oh, don't waste my evenings. Yeah. Good knowledge. <laughs> the year, because the year after, so we lost to Quinns. The year after that, I was injured. Last year, we didn't make it. Um, so, yeah, it'd be really good to get, get to another final this year and, and hopefully win it. Um, and then, yeah, I think internationally i'd love to get capped again um but yeah just taking each game as it comes at the moment and just trying to stay injury free and um touch a wood again and um yeah just playing as well as i can outstanding Tilly, thank you so much for, for joining us mid school break um that's a commitment to it um really really appreciate it uh i'll see you at the stadium for the weekend um but uh yeah congrats on the last 10 years and, and here's some many more Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm Sue Day and you're listening to the Women's Rugby Pod. Lovely to speak to Sydney Gregson. I like that. Mid, mid work. Um, that's commitment to uh, to promoting your own sport, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big old game. At, uh, at the Stanex at the weekend, as I said there. Possibly not the, 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 the shine because, yeah, well, neither got to the final last season, did they? But it's still a hell of a game, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's the same thing. It's the London rival. There was a time when it was Quinns and Sarries, you know, set to be in the final for a few years. So I think the fact that other teams have really caught up and invested is brilliant. But I think that kind of deep-rooted rivalry will still be there no matter no matter how each team is performing, they'll always want to beat each other because they've had years and years of doing it in the finals. So um, I think it will be exciting. I think each team will put their best on. They will go to battle. And I think it'll be brilliant to watch. Do you have a, a team you particularly uh, like to play against because you particularly want to be particularly physical, Sadia? I mean, uh, Leicester is a, is a new derby, isn't it, now? Um, you're going to try and ramp that up in your head? And, and why, why do teams do that? Is it... Is it to find a motivation because you've got to get yourself up and down every single week? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, we've got Leicester this weekend, which is the new, I put quotation marks, the new local derby. Obviously, we only played them once. And I remember when we first came into playing them, everyone was saying, you know, it's the, um, a derby between Loughborough and Leicester. I mean, you never played each other before. So I was like, is it really? Is it really a derby? I don't know. We couldn't, we couldn't really build on that rivalry because we hadn't actually played them. But obviously now playing them once and coming into this weekend, um, off back of two wins, you obviously just want to build build on that. So I wanted to put out uh, the best performance we can and the biggest score we can on Leicester. And obviously Leicester have been have been going going well, you know, being being new into the Prem, um, you know, having Meg Jones put on the strings around that. And I feel like it's bringing a lot of the girls up with her and they've been putting on good scores. And, you know, the results might not have been going away, but I feel like they would have had a lot of confidence coming into this game. So I think Loughborough's um, thing this week will be trying to, you know, dampen that confidence, kind of putting that putting that fire out, because I'll definitely come all guns blazing um, towards us. But I think if I was to pick a team to play against, personally, it would be Exeter, just because they're a very straight, straight-running team. And I 
I love um, tackling people. So, you know, it goes hand in hand, really. And you like playing at Sandy Park? Um, no? Well, mm. one of the defining... For me, and many journos um, and broadcasters, one of your defining performances of your career was at Sandy Park against USA. This is true. This is true. I, I don't not not like it. I just don't really like the sandy mud, which, you know, is called Sandy Park, but it's not really nice on my skin. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my only my only complaint, really. <laughs> <laughs> Note to the groundsman, can you put moisturiser into the <laughs> tank fields, please? The sun is, the sun is good. Look, uh, this weekend, it, it's full, full, full of weekend, isn't it? Uh, 12.30, that duel between Saracens and Harlequins at the Stenix, 2 o'clock. Sunday was alluding to a lesser challenge to love for lining Sunday. Exit work from Sale. Uh, both of the bounce back from defeat. Uh, and the final game is that West Coast derby between Gloucester Hartbury and, and Bristol. Nesta, pretty close to Gloucester Hartbury. Uh, there are some caveats to that, as we were talking about earlier. Um, but they're a pro- proper team on this side here. Um, I would say quaking in your boots, but um, your yeah, preparations have got to be tight. Yeah, of course. I mean, I feel like in this league, you know, you can never really write any teams off or or like take the foot off the gas going into weeks. So Loughborough's preparations are are still the same as if we're playing, you know, any other team. Um, and like like you said, and like I said, Le- Leicester, they've been they've been going well. You know, some of the results are not going their way, but they're always managing to get some tries on the board. Um, and they're always managing to, you know. Well, for the past two games, caused caused a few upsets against bigger teams. Obviously, Gloucester not having a full strength side out, but still to 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 come so close to a you know the last year's champions is is nothing to to kind of turn your head at. So yeah, and I think they'll they'll take great confidence from that coming into coming into the game this weekend. You bagged a, a couple of points, didn't they? Um, and looked, yeah, we uh, was tied at half time. Um, how much do we have to worry for Sale? Burner, um, extra don't like losing. Um, you caught up with Susie post game, didn't you? Actually, uh, at the weekend, um, a frustrated figure. I think, I think, yeah, I think it was more, more maybe slightly disappointing than for her than than frustrating. I think she she alluded to the fact that we we entered the twenty two and we took those opportunities, which previously we we haven't done. That's something we've really worked on, and I think she was saying that. Um, how when Exeter entered the 22, they, they didn't execute those opportunities. And that, again, that's what comes down to, to winning and losing. How Can you take those opportunities or, or can you not? Um, so I think definitely they, I think Susie will be hammering into them about when they enter the 22, they have to come away with points. So I, I do think that it will probably be um, a, a hard week for, of training for Exeter and they'll definitely go into the weekend with some fire in their bellies to show that, you know, we are still this amazing team. Um, we are here to win and we are here to compete. So I think for sale, um, they also need to be ready for to to defend that and and get themselves, you know, pull themselves back up from the the loss on the weekend and get ready to to fight Exeter. Yeah, big big old loss. Um, yeah, let's get a let's get a sale guest on next week to to try and have a, a little look at what's going on there. Um, the the final picks have got a heartbreak, Bristol. Uh, we touched on it with Phoebe, didn't we? Um, but it's it's huge, isn't it? Um, for not necessarily this weekend, but but what lies ahead as well. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think it's going to be a really good game. I think the fact that Bristol now have that um, understanding of pressure, how to manage pressure, I think, and, and how close our game was, considering we had a five day turnaround from X to to Gloucester last time. It was only 12, 12 nil and looking at a lot of the stats um it was it was unlucky for us not to come away with those points so i think actually on upon reflection it was good for us to lose that game um and it's great for us to have the momentum to have won against exeter and go into this week with both the teams you know raring to to score and to win and to execute and to keep hold of the ball so it'll be really exciting to see one, how Bristol prepare this week for Gloucester, and two, to to get down to King's home, and, and I'm looking forward to watching that game. I think it will be incredibly entertaining. Well, is it going to be won and lost, sorry, to wear? Hmm. Well, I, I would usually I would usually say the forward pack, which is what I usually say. 
But with the way both Gloucester and Bristol play, um, they like to go wide, wide, um, with with loads of options in the middle as well, being able to hit short runners or hit out of the back, I think it will be won and lost purely through execution. I think both teams are going to turn up on the day, um, really physical. Uh, they know how big how big the game is because, you know, any, any win can change the table. Um, so I think it will be the team who can withstand that pressure and then in turn, you know, have the highest execution rate, whether that's going into 22, whether that's keeping ball, um, whether that's, you know, kicking. But I think I, I can I can imagine both teams will really turn up on the day and we'll see a lot of great rugby and a lot of great tries, but it'll be the team who'll be able to be clinical and um, clinical enough to, you know, get get that win. I think with the way that Gloucester play, I think it is they they like to kick their territory based players and then they use their their really strong collision carriers to to get over the the try line. So I think for me, it's going to be definitely our, our back three. How do we defend those those kicking opportunities that Clakey is brilliant at putting in? Um, and then how do we front up defensively? How are we going to stop those ball carriers? And likewise for Gloucester, how are they going to defend the the plays around the edge through the middle? Um, the exciting style of rugby that Bristol play. So I would also normally say forward pack, but I think the forward pack is pretty matched with this game. Um, so it, it will be down to the execution and how do you handle that territory-based game and defensive game pressure. Ooh, full analysis. Full analysis. And when you don't have that, and it's something I've spoken to, uh, to Dave about, um, it is resting that momentum back. Um, because you're you're tight, you're a side that likes to keep the ball, Bristol, um, and it's getting those mindset managers um, working to to wrestle that ball back, isn't it? Because you you do like to have possession. Yeah, definitely, and it's about. I think Phoebe alluded to it there in, in the first half against Exeter. We we were doing things that we don't normally do. We were playing literally into our try line. And we have the opportunity to clear that and get into the right places. I think if we can play how we did in the second half and play in the right spaces with the ball, I think it will be a lot better result than trying to wrestle out of our own halfway, <laughs> um, which can sometimes not always go to plan, especially against a brilliant defence like Gloucester. They have an excellent defence. So it would be it would be really interesting to, to see one what Dave brings in because he brings in something every week so <laughs> it'd be great to he he does so much analysis it'll be interesting to see how he's going to combat that um and then too again it'll be brilliant to see how each team executes and and uh, goes goes ahead against against one another yeah hell of, hell of a game um quickly then your predictions sorry assassins quins going to go size uh, i think also quins come back on the, off the back of a really good win but you know, Saris, they've been really, really consistent and a really, really strong team, so I'm going to go with them. Yeah, Sarah. also Saris, I think their their big pillars are keeping the ball alive. I think they do that very well and they've got a team of players that can do that. So I think just with how they're kind of gelling together this year, I, I think it will be Saris. Yeah. Same here. Uh, we, were, we were wrong about Exeter Bristol last, last week when we started, but let's, let's, let's scoot over that. <laughs> uh, Leicester, Love for Lightning, Sarah Byrne. Um, I think Loughborough. I think they're building really nicely. Um, I think they've got the experience of how to win those games and I think it will be a really exciting for Loughborough actually. I think um, they'll play some really, really nice rugby and they'll have some brilliant opportunities to show their, their players like Sadia and Helena running through in those spaces. I think it'll be nice for them. I do think, you know, obviously Meg will be as she does lead that team, literally plays all positions for them. So <laughs> I think I think if you if you can stop her with her chips and chases I think they might score some some really entertaining tries, but I do think that Loughborough will have it. Yeah, I think Loughborough. I've got to go back to the, the African Violet, you know. Me too. Uh, Exeter Sale. One word. Exeter. Uh, Exeter, yeah. Exeter. Close to Heartbreak, Bristol. Yeah, I'm going Bristol. I backed them last week. I'm backing them this week. Good for you. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I I should back Bristol now, seeing as I underestimated them last week, and obviously Gloucester have had two two games where and they have quite a few injuries. I thought they were just doing um, rotation, but I think they have a few injuries as well. But obviously two games where their squad has not really pulled together and got the result that we were used to seeing from Gloucester. So I feel like they're going to be kind of not scrapping, but really trying to claw back back to their winning well. 
uh, the Gloucester winning way. So I think Bristol could have every opportunity to, you know, kind of uh, expose those cracks that are in the Gloucester side right now. So I am I am going to go with Bristol for the win. Just to be controversial, I'm going to go Gloucester Harbury. <laughs> Um, so we'll see how that that, that pans out. Look, uh, to, to remind you, at uh, twelve thirty, Saracens against Harlequins. That's the game live on TNT. But as ever, we will say to you, get down there live. It's going to be a big old day. Um, there's lots of hype around it. I understand 150 x Saracens players uh, coming down to enjoy the day, and there's lots of sort of activities and events going on as well. Two o'clock, uh, Leicester travel to Loughborough. Sunday, Exeter. Welcome, Sale and Gloucester Hartbury against Bristol. That about wraps it up for a, another week. Just one little shout out, Sadia. Yes, one shout out uh, going to Emily Scott on her hundredth appearance for Harlequins. Congratulations! You're a very consistent player. Been a Fabulous servant for, for the quarters. Uh, and just to remind you, uh, if you didn't need reminding as well, the, the fundraising for Gareth Street, the World Cup winning coach, continues. An amazing response so far, but the uh, cost of his uh, recovery treatments continue to, to sort of stack up. So go fund me, streets ahead is where you need to go. Go fund me, streets ahead is where you need to go. Uh, and our DMs are always open if you wanted to send a message to Gary as well. Ladies, it's been an absolute pleasure. Loved our centres of excellence and our our bed of red roses. Hmm. That didn't really work. Did it? it worked on that one. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll just grab a taxi, will I? <laughs> Ladies, you predict these other two win of the weekend. Uh, pleasure being in your company. So we'll see how that all, all pans out next week. But uh, yeah, both of you, go win of the weekend. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. <laughs>